before we get started, I'm going to show you a couple examples. Um, these ones are on big, long pieces of paper. Um, but this is kind of what our projects are going to look like. Maya asked kind of what materials we're going to be using. So what these students did is they used crayon for the like grass, for the stems, for the sunflowers, and then they used watercolor paint for the background. So here's one example. Here is another example. So again, watercolor paint in the background. This is all done in crayon, all the sunflowers. And this is a third example. So you can see all of them are different backgrounds. Now, if you don't have watercolor, that is completely fine. You can use other materials for the background, but if you do have watercolor, as we move forward with this project, we will be talking about how to use that a little bit more. So you can see this background is orange, this one is blue, and this one is pink. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about what colors you can use for your background and what colors you probably shouldn't use for your background. And I have more examples in my presentation as well. Vincent van Gogh, a Dutch painter born in 1853. Again, on the left here is a self-portrait that he painted of himself. And on the right-hand side, it is a painting, super, super famous painting. You might have seen it before. It's called The Starry Night. Another famous painting that he did is a sunflower painting. Now, this is kind of what we are going to use as inspiration for our sunflowers. Now, I am going to let it be a pretty open project. So if you want to do something that's very similar to what Vincent van Gogh did, where it is a flower vase with like a background and a table and a bunch of sunflowers in a vase, you can do it like that. Or you can do your sunflowers like the examples that I showed you at the beginning of class, where it's more like they look like they're outside, right? There's grass on the bottom, there's stems coming up from the ground, and then there's sunflowers in the sky. So I'm going to leave that up to you. And again, when we start drawing out our designs tomorrow on a practice piece of paper, just like we did with our maps, we're going to do a first draft and then we're going to do a final draft. So a sketch and then a final drawing when we can talk about more about kind of what you want yours to look like then. There are a couple of things that you do need to include. One thing that I want you to try to include is a focal point. So you still can do a vase, like I said, and like a background and a wall, but I do want the flowers to be the focal point. So the focal point means that your eye, when you look at your artwork, is going right to the flower. It's not going to the background, it's not looking at the vase, it's looking right at the flower. And the, a big way that you can make the flower the focal point is if it's the biggest thing on your paper, right? So if you do want to do a vase, what I'm going to ask you to do is make it a little bit smaller. So the biggest thing that you can see is the sunflowers. And again, when we're starting out our sketches, we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. Two other things that I really want us to work on in this project are overlapping and realism. So overlapping, you can see in the picture on the left, and there's overlapping on the right too, but I want you to look at the left picture. You can tell that this sunflower is in front of the sunflower in the back because the petals are going on top of the other petals. So like if you take your two hands and you put one hand on top of the other, that's overlapping. So I'm going to talk again more about this tomorrow once we start drawing, but I want you to really focus when you're drawing your flowers, you want to make them nice and big, they should be the focal point, and it should overlap somewhere on your picture, okay? It could overlap the um, petals, it could overlap the entire sunflower, you could overlap the stems or the leaves on your project. It's kind of up to you, but you do need to show overlapping and we'll talk about that more tomorrow. And then realism. Realism means that it looks real. So when we're working on this project, I want us to try our very best to make them look the way sunflowers really look in real life, which means we'll be using realistic colors. Our stems will be green, our leaves will be green, our petals can be either kind of like that orangey color that you see in some of these flowers, and mainly they're going to be kind of that yellow color. The inside of our sunflowers will be kind of this dark brown or this black color. So we're going to be using realistic colors and we're going to be using realistic drawing skills to make it look as real as possible. So if someone looks over at your drawing at the end of this project, they know exactly what it is. So focal point is a sunflower. 
Overlapping is sunflowers going on top of each other, and realism is making them look as real as possible. So I showed you some examples in the beginning. I'm also going to show you some examples here. Now these are from my second graders from last year. So you can see the overlapping. All right, so the petals are overlapping in this one. Petals are overlapping here. We've got one flower overlapping the stem here, and the clouds in the background are actually overlapping. And then all three of these flowers are overlapping. Now you'll notice that these second graders added other things too. So Eleanor, this could be an option too if this is, interests you at all. This person added a bumblebee. This one has a caterpillar and a butterfly. We have suns, we have clouds. So these are all options of things that you can add. And again, the sunflowers are done with crayons and then the background is done with watercolor. Now some have more overlapping than others, but all of these you can tell have overlapping on them somewhere, whether it's in the petals or the leaves or the actual whole sunflower. And you can see there we're using oranges, we're using yellows. And again, they added a couple things like we've got dirt, we've got a hill, a sun, we've got birds. So there are other things that you can add into as long as the sunflower is the focal point, right? Here are some more examples. This one is overlapped a little bit in the leaf here. I would have liked to see a little bit more overlapping in this first one, but there still is overlapping here. Same, they're overlapping with these petals here. I think they could have added a couple more, but they still did and included overlapping. And then on the bottom too as well, using realistic colors. So I wanted to show you these ones because two of these friends decided to do a vase. So they did a vase, but as you can see, the big sunflowers are the focal point. Like your eye goes to the sunflowers first, not the vase. Same with this one on the bottom. The vase is actually really, really small. And so you're looking at the sunflowers the most, okay? And then you can notice that people decided to color their petals in different ways. So some people decided just to keep the inside of the sunflower brown and the outside yellow. Some did the inside of the sunflower brown and the outside orange. And then some people did a mixture of both. So this like second one right here where my mouse is that has the two butterflies on it and the vase, that you can see that the inside is colored brown and black, which is an option. And then their petals are colored yellow and orange. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and look at some of these examples. Okay, these ones are the same way. So this student decided to just do black on the inside and yellow on the outside. That's totally an option too. Okay, it still looks like a sunflower in my opinion. Otherwise, you can mix together the oranges and the yellows and you can make your petals look like that. All right, again, we've got some mixed, some not, some with black inside, some with brown insides. And again, looking at similar ones, okay? So all of these things are options. So tomorrow for class, I'm going to have you come with a white piece of paper and a pencil, and I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to draw some sunflowers together underneath my iPad screen so you can see what I'm doing and how I'm overlapping, all right? So two colors I would suggest not using for watercolor is yellow because most of your sunflowers are going to have yellow on them and I don't want the petals of your sunflower to blend in with the background. And I also would not use green just because the sky never really is green. Like a sunrise might be pink, red, purple, kind of those colors or a sunset might be like blue, purple, also pink. Those are all options, but the sky really is never green. And if you did a green background, it would blend in with the stems of your project and the grass of your project if you're doing yours outside. So yeah, I would say stay away from yellow and green, but everything else, fair game. Um, Can we use yellow for the sunset if we do a sunset? Yes, you could. What I would suggest, let me hold one of mine up again quick. What I would suggest, if you were doing a sunset and you wanted to put yellow in it, I would put the yellow at the bottom near kind of like the horizon line where your ground is so that it's not touching your sunflowers just because they will blend okay. in and it won't look as nice. 